Hi friends, welcome to day one of my National Poetry Month Challenge. I'm so excited to start writing poems with you all today. It's just afternoon in sunny Arkansas. I've been up since 5 a.m., which is when I stupidly ordered groceries because I literally finished planning this video at 5 a.m. this morning. But the groceries just arrived and I should be able to start cooking soon. But first, we're gonna take a look at today's featured poetry collection. Today's featured collection is American Sonnets for My Past and Future Assassin. How do you see that title and not pick it up? I chose this book for somewhat obvious reasons, given some recent unprecedented developments in American politics. This is a collection of 70 sonnets written during the first 200 days of the Donald Trump presidency. Reading from the summary on the back of the book, it says, these poems are haunted by the country's past and future eras and errors, its dreams and nightmares. Inventive, compassionate, hilarious, melancholy, and bewildered. The wonders of this new collection are irreducible and stunning. Now, as a former Muslim teenager, I love constraints. They keep me creative. The only people who suffer more constraints than the black man in America is maybe the black woman. More on that in tomorrow's feature. But I love the idea of an entire collection comprised of just one form. I find constraints so generative. I especially love that it's the sonnet form, which traditionally presents some sort of answerable charge in the first half and then relays some sort of clarifying turn toward the end. The very idea of enacting a form like this on the history of such a turbulent country, it's genius. Terence Hayes is a genius, an absolute powerhouse of a poet, an incredibly talented man. He currently teaches English at NYU. He's incredibly accomplished. He's won so many accolades. He even created his own poetic form, the Golden Shovel. And I'm actually going to a free Golden Shovel workshop tonight, taught by my dear friend and fellow poet Sophia Fay, who is absolutely amazing, and I hope I get this vlog up in time for people to see and also go. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description so you can sign up. And from now on, I'll be sure to share any opportunities I know about ahead of time so that you can also benefit from them. But first, a prompt inspired by American sonnets for my past and future assassin. Write a sonnet. And here, that can just mean a poem comprised of 14 lines that sheds new light on a political event. It doesn't have to be a recent political event, but the light it sheds needs to be current. And that's purely for selfish reasons. I want more poems that help me understand the state of things in the world. And now, for the food prompt, which I will cook in front of you. When I was putting all this together last night at 12 a.m., I wondered, what is the most American thing I could pair this book with? The answer, of course, is apple pie, and not just any apple pie. We're making a McDonald's apple pie imitation because the only thing more American than apple pie is McDonald's apple pie. So I don't have much counter space. We're gonna have to make use of the stove top today. We'll see how this goes. I'm just gonna lay out all the ingredients first. You do have the option to buy filling, but I'm gonna make my own because I like a challenge and I might regret this very soon, but we'll see. So here's all the ingredients that I'll be using for the apple filling. Apples, cornstarch, nutmeg, cinnamon, lemon juice, butter, sugar, water, and a peeler. So we're gonna start the sauce by cutting up the apples. In cooking, prepping the apples means cutting them up, I think. <laughs> This is gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so I just washed the apples. Um, in the recipe, it says to blanch them next. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I don't think these apples need to be blanched, whatever that means. I think they're already soft enough because the purpose of blanching is to make sure that they're cooked all the way through, but these are already pretty soft. So I think I can get by without blanching. So I managed to peel all the apples. Well, they're not entirely peeled, but they're mostly peeled. I'm okay with a little bit of peel. But then I saw on the recipe card that it says six apples and I counted like nine in this bag, but I had already peeled them all. So I have no idea what I'm gonna do with these three. I'm open to suggestions. Also, I just realized that my mom left behind this produce cutter. So, I wish I had remembered this sooner because all of that was a lot, but I still have a good bit to chop up, so I'm going to use that next. 
So we have the produce chopper here. I'm a little confused about how it works. I think you just put this down. But then like, why is the handle over here? Like, am I supposed to hold it? Like, this makes no sense. You think you just like push down? Oh, that's pretty nice. Okay, this was massively helpful. It helped save me a lot of time. And I like that most of the apples will be about the same now. I did already chop some, so those might be a little different, but that's okay. So now that the apples are done, we're gonna add the lemon juice. It said to add the juice of one lemon that's been zested. I think that means peeling it. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the equivalent of one lemon is. But this says it's the juice of about 10 lemons, so I need a tenth of this. Okay, the lemon has been added. I don't think you can go wrong with adding lemon, but I don't know. I guess I can always increase the sugar if I got it wrong. I'm not sure. There is a very strong lemon scent in this kitchen right now. I hope nobody watches this with the intention of actually learning how to make this. Um, like, I hope nobody finds this video and thinks it's going to be an actual recipe. Um, because this is not, like, I can't say that I recommend any of the steps that I've done. I'm not a cook. I think that'll become very obvious throughout the month. Next, it says to combine a bunch of ingredients into a medium saucepan. I think this is a medium saucepan. It seems like it'll hold out the apples. Let's see. Um, I definitely think I did something wrong because this does not look appetizing at all. I think I should have added brown sugar, but I didn't buy any. I thought what I had would be enough. But I guess we'll see. I'm supposed to stir this until it's dissolved. I actually was kind of dumb about this. So it said to bring the pan to medium heat and add all the ingredients in, but I didn't have the ingredients measured out yet. So I measured them out and like dumped them in the pan before I turned the pan on. And I don't know if that like made an impact. Um, those are apples that you see floating around in it, by the way, because <laughs> I had the spoon and the apples at first to mix the apples with the lemon juice. What is this? Like, why is this so unnecessarily hard? <laughs> okay, I, I think if it's too thin, you're supposed to add more cornstarch. So maybe I do that next. So I was supposed to like slowly mix the cornstarch in, um, but that has left the park now because I was just using this container and a huge chunk of it just popped out. So now I'm fighting for my life with this cornstarch over here. Um, it's getting very thick very fast. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have no idea what to do at this point. Um, I got scared and turned off the heat because I thought it might explode or like a fire might start. So I called for backup and my friend is gonna come help me. It just keeps getting thicker and thicker. Um, probably because I turned the stove off, which was really short-sighted and um, I'm realizing as I read more of the recipe, I really should have read it all before starting. Um, now I know for tomorrow, I guess. Did I just discover caramel? Okay, now I'm just stirring in the apples to the best of my ability. Turns out I did choose a pan that's way too small for all these. It's starting to bubble. Once again, 
my friends have reassured me that that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have great forearms after this. Why is this so thick? Okay, this is starting to look a little bit like something like it's supposed to now, which is good. Um, I mean, sort of. It keeps making these really ominous sounds. My hands are incredibly sticky. I feel like I should go wash them. I don't remember life before this pot. She said medium saucepan, but in her defense, she probably didn't use as much cornstarch. Okay, now I'm letting it cool down to room temperature. I'm gonna take a seat, work on some poems while I wait for it to do that. So I'm gonna be typing my poems, but I'm also gonna be handwriting them first. Um, particularly when I write rough drafts, I like handwriting them. I really wanna finish this journal this month. We're getting kind of close. I think we're like just a few pages away now. We're getting sort of close. I think I can finish it within the month. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. I think it's time that we make the pies now. The worst part about this is that it's Ramadan and I'm fasting, so I can't taste this before I make the pies. But I'm gonna do a taste test later tonight and share that with you. I'm gonna be using this Filsbury pie crust for the crust. I'm just gonna cut it into squares or rectangles, I guess they are. I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and make them before I set up the air fryer. I'm just gonna bring this pot over here. Probably should have used like a spoon or something. Probably would have done better. Let me do that. <laughs> Why is this so hard? <laughs> Okay, she did this thing with the... Do I dare to do this? <laughs> yeah, I think I have to just accept that mine are not gonna look as good as hers. Oh no, the filling's coming out! Okay, move him out of the way. Okay. I think they're ready for the air fryer. The rest of me also. <laughs> I hate this so much. Um, the recipe also calls for a light dusting of cinnamon before you put it in the the air fryer. So this is my light dusting. I messed up, but it's okay. I think it'll still taste good. Okay. Here's number two. Um, also not that great looking. 
<laughs> but hopefully good tasting. Hi guys, I'm back for the taste test. I just broke my fast and I am going to taste this really quick. I probably should have heated it up, but it's okay. It's not anything to write home about, but I think for like the first apple pie I've ever made in my life, it's not bad. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you tomorrow for more.